Welcome to another episode of Science Stream. We'll be starting our podcast shortly, so sit back, relax. If you have any questions for our audience, for sorry, for our guests, please feel free to leave your questions in the comment section. See you in a bit. Hello once again, especially to those who have just joined us. I'm Sean from Tecton Penang, Penang's very own science discovery team. Most species of fish for the marine aquarium trade come from the wild, including the adorable orange and white striped crawfish, or more popularly known as Nemo. Due to its popularity in recent years, it's one of the first marine fish new hobbies turn to. To minimize the impacts of marine aquarium trade, on wild fish population and coral health, we have seen a shift towards captive bred fish since the 1970s. Dr. Liu Hanjong, an associate professor at the Institute of Tropical Agriculture and Fisheries, will tell us about breeding Nemo, captive bred clownfish in this month's science stream. Dr. Liu has led research projects valued at about 750,000 ringgit in total and were co-researchers for about a dozen others valued at more than 4 million ringgit in total. He has received many domestic and international academic awards, with the latest being the Vice-Chancellor Special Award for Talent Recognition in Knowledge Transfer last year. Apart from publishing dozens of peer-reviewed research papers, Dr. Liu was formerly on the editorial board of Frontier in Physiology, the Journal of Sustainable Sciences and Management, and Pisha Magazine. Is also a peer reviewer of, for 20 publications. After Dr. Liu received his doctorate in fish physiology from the University of Antwerp in Belgium in 2013, he returned to his alma mater, where he did his diploma, bachelor's degree, and master's to be a lecturer and researcher there. It was during his master's dissertation that he dabbled in the breeding of clownfish under captive condition and tonight, he will enlighten us more on this topic. Please join me to welcome Dr. Liu to the show. Thank you very much, Sean, for the very introductions. Yeah, welcome to the science stream. Yeah, thank, thank you for being with us. Yeah, okay. and good evening to everyone. So, uh, please tell us, what does the tropical uh, aquaculture and fisheries, or more commonly known as aquatrop, do? Um, Aquatrop, the formal, formal names and uh, a full name now as the uh, Institute of Tropical Aquaculture and Fisheries, is a uh, very role in an uh, important role in research, teaching, and services for the community. Our, uh, we have just received a state, uh, status awarded by the Ministry of Higher Education as one as the uh, a higher is a higher institute uh, center of excellence with a with a niche area focused area in uh, sustainable shellfish aquaculture, specifically uh, focused on future food. And uh, a role of the aquatrop known as a, a resource that that do all the uh, uh, research services that all related to aquaculture and fishery issue, and also we provide. Uh, a teaching program, a teaching program for postgraduate in master and PhD. We also offers uh, attachments for uh, institutions, for industrial uh, uh, staff, or even for the uh, in international student who come in to do a specific so, um, uh, programs. And we can also customize our training program according to uh, specific requirements. Do is all related to uh, uh, aquaculture and fishery from uh, from laboratory to hatchery management, right. right? And also at the same time, we also uh, have these uh, services which provided to serve and to help 
and to advise and uh, assist uh, industrial aquaculture uh, in Malaysia, in, either in Malaysia or in uh, uh, internationally. We also uh, provide a program for the local community, which we need to transfer our knowledge that we, uh, we develop, we discover, and transfer the technologies into um, applicable uh, uh, um, approach to the local community. So, Dr. Liu, before we proceed further, I'm sure you would also like to know the views from our live audience. So, yeah. we're conducting some polls tonight, and the first poll that we have tonight is clownfish. Do they live in A, seawater, B, freshwater, C, brackish water, uh, a mixture of sea and freshwater, or D, tap water? Okay, so let us know yeah. what you think below. Uh, as, you know, you don't need to worry if you are getting it right or wrong. You also do not need to worry uh, as no one can see what actually you answered, right? Not even us over here. So just feel free to answer what you think. So Dr. Liu, can you share with us your research interests? My research interests, I'm, uh, I'm as a fish physiologist. So my research interests mainly focus on physiological responses or adaptability or their compromising strategy that use to adapt this uh, into this uh, current changing environment scenario, which putting the uh, feeding, uh, nu the nutrition, the uh, social interactions, as well as the, uh, the environment factor into, uh, into, into, into the study scope. Right? And we look into the cost of living, how much energy, how much cost that be, they spend in this changing environments and does this affect the cost that they use how much the the the, the energy that we need to reserve for spawning for growth and also for uh their biological uh, biochemistry changing such as the glucose the blood pressures and also the uh, electrolyte in the body how much they cook they spend the energy to cook in this situation this is my main focus and in all my study and currently where I put in more focus into sustainable resources for um, uh, aquaculture feed that current uh, using this uh, black soldier fry and look into this black soldier fry energy how much the energy that we feed to the fish how much it been, it been channeled into the use for the metabolic uh, developments and also how much the energy that you use reserve for the Godard development for spawning. Does this energy that we supply is sufficient enough as compared to the, uh, the, the, the current source that we use as a fish meal, which is one of the most expensive and unsustainable resources. Yeah, this, this is the research program. But in my leisure time, um, I like to play around with this living color so called the ornamental fish, not only fresh water, but also a marine, including the uh, stream as well, just to study their uh, uh, inter interactions, uh, their social, social behavior in captive conditions. And can we learn something from them and how we can communicate with them, like their behavior, themselves how they change their behavior when you come across them and do do they do you uh, can uh, communicate or get something message from this small creature who is living in this uh, changing in this advanced world but they're still here in, although they are very small so um these are my my leisure time to fill up my leisure time playing around with this a small, tiny, living color. <laughs> okay, so speaking of uh, living colors, let's see if our audience knows our uh, orange and white uh, fish. If they know which aquatic environment that the clownfish live in. Wow, looks like everyone knows clownfish lives in seawater. Maybe thanks to the animated movie Finding Nemo. Exactly. 
<laughs> so how long have you been involved uh, with clownfish breeding? What got you interested in the first place? Well, um, how long I have been involved in clownfish breeding? It was started when I uh, pursued my master study after I finished my degree, which is in uh, 2004. I start my 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 master degree that focused in this uh, study, and I was um, fortunate and uh, to be offered by uh, my supervisor, Professor Abu Nur Munafia Ambok Bolong dengan and uh, Professor Asmi Ambak that they got the grant, they need to find someone to uh, take over this, uh, uh, this uh, research. And by that time, it was something, a challenge, I know it's very challenging and it's uh, not an easy, easy touch to, 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 to solve, but then I like it because it's something something to do with the, the living color, something to do with the ornamental fish, which my patient is there. So start at the time in 2004, then uh, start the project, spend a lot of time to stay together with this fish. Every day I spend almost like 10 hours, 12 to 12 hours, just in the hatchery together with the fish, study the behavior, study their feeding, and preference and then their privacy what do they need and try to understand them and but during that time also we are our our uh, literature search, our e references are still not as advanced as nowadays so what we need to what i'm doing is just put on full effort to learn this species then and uh, slowly we get get uh, to know them, then they start to build up my interest, my my uh, fall in love with this species, right? And um, until uh, in between, uh, I spent four four years in Belgium for my PhD PhD studies. After return from my PhD, continue again and uh, uh, with this uh, clownfish project and I get a grant from industry to support this. Also, I would like to acknowledge Agrotalk, especially the professor, uh, our, our former uh, director, Professor, professor Abu Munafi, who giving uh, a chance again to continue this project and giving give one's laboratory for me to just accommodate this uh, uh, species, this my pet <laughs> in the Agrotalk. <laughs> So yes, yeah. that's, that's what the uh, stories and the patient is there, so uh, doesn't feel is uh, tiring or is a uh, challenge, but something like uh, a hobby, more like a hobby to 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 study this species. When you see this fish, how do they react and interact with you? Then you really and you you will really appreciate the F, all the effort that you're putting in. I can tell you that clownfish, they do have their first expressions on their mood. If they are not happy, their swimming pattern will be different. Their, their first expression will be different. And if someone who entered the room without, uh, without informing me or without we, uh, then it stress the fish or we took the photo from the aquarium with flash. Then they would, when I entered the room, it's likely there is some, they try to tell me something going wrong. Something is here. Then the expression is different. When they are happy, you can easily see them. They will, when you enter the room, they all will swim up towards you and then they swim up and down with the, all the fins flipping. So those are the those are the, the the understanding that we, I would say that we built between the fish, and <laughs> and us. <laughs> yeah. So you were saying that pets, right? So let's have our second poll for tonight. Okay. So let's ask our audience: Would you keep a clownfish as a pet, even if it is an endangered species? Right. So yes, no. Okay. So you know what you do. Click on the, your answer right down below. So, Dr. Liu, every organism has a role to play in any ecosystem. 
what is the clownfish role and importance to the marine ecosystem in general and to humans and the fisheries industry specifically? Oh, well, every living organism in this world, do, they do have their role, right? So even though these are clownfish, they're not like other fish, which they travel along across the continents and then migrating and then come back again. Clownfish, no, they spend their whole life just in the same sea anemone. And in the, uh, especially for false clownfish, right, their social distance is just around um, uh, uh, 30, 30 centimeters away from the surrounding uh, sea anemone. They are not like other fish which can swim around. But with that social distance, limited, limited social distance, within the sea they within the sea anemone the clownfish play a very important role which they go with uh, uh, supply food to the sea anemone as well as they will try they are playing an important role to ventilate the sea anemone which to keep the sea anemone healthy in that particular uh, uh, ecosystem while the sea anemone they provided uh, protections, home for this uh, clownfish. They know that the sea animal have this zantalia uh, cells, which they can sting all other uh, animal, which they are not sting on this uh, clownfish because clownfish have a very thick skin, and they have the very thick uh, mucus, which can protect uh, them themselves from this zantalia uh, uh, cells, this uh, sting uh, uh, cells, and. In the ecosystem itself, the sea and the clownfish, they grip gripping all these uh, uh, small small food from uh, from leftover from others uh, predators, that bring it back, that re and then recycle all the nutrients that uh, uh, from other from once uh, 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 one resources to another resources which make the, the whole ecosystem become more stable. That's the rules that are played around in this. And see the sea anemone that without uh, clownfish, they do can survive, but then they will not as healthy as where there is a sea other clownfish available. That's in yeah. that's one of the indications that indicate the coral system whether it's a healthy or it's uh, not healthy. Yeah. I think that's one of the questions from the audience, okay? yeah. uh, so Sharifa, no Ritzlin, uh, yeah. Dr. Liu, can Solaris clownfish live without any moon? So I think you just answered that just now. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the questions. In the oceans, in the nature, clownfish cannot survive without sea anemone. But in captivity, yes, they can survive without the sea anemone in aquarium especially if you want to keep at home you don't don't have to keep the sea anemone to keep the sea anemone is more difficult more challenging compared to you keep the fish okay yeah uh, so I'm right. yeah okay so continue yeah. to the, the previous questions yeah 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 so to human whether you think the the, the clownfish in living in this world do they have any contribution or or impact to human oh yes huge impact remember the movie finding nemo so those are the the, the one of the, the 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 business opportunity opportunity right <laughs> also, i would say that uh, see any other uh, clownfish is one of the very unique um, uh, living color model for research why clownfish they have a very unique life cycle. Clownfish, um, they do change sex in their whole life, once in their life. Right? When they hatch, when they're starting to hatch from larvae, these clownfish uh, will swim up to the surface, follow the moonlight, right? go through a 14 to 21 day of the developments, then they will try to settle down and then try to search for the 
uh, MTC anemone or any anemone that are ever to accommodate them, then they will set that settle down. If they're not able to find any sea anemone that ever or any family that able to that can accommodate them, they will gone in. Yes, they will gone. They were not able to survive, right? So, what happened is this clownfish when they settle down in a sea anemone in a group, not much. It was just roughly about six to eight numbers in one sea anemone this is one of their family so they were living together and if they are among the same size from the same family or from different family but they are all, almost the same size they settle down at the same time at one sea anemone this family they will start to social interact with among the uh, family member this will, they will go to a uh, hierarchy social interactions which they will fight among them, among the individuals. They will fight, and then the ones that first uh, win in the in the in the interactions, these individuals they will continue to grow, to and dominant the the dominant the the whole family to become a female. The rest, again, they will go through this cycle, and to fight with among them. Then the second dominant, subdominant individual that are from the family will develop to become a male fish. Then these two become the parents to take care of that family. And the rest of the, of the clownfish will remain the size small and they don't have any sex. And once they go through the whole process of the sexual development, these two parents will continue to breed, to reproduce and up to a, 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 a uncertain age, then the female is too old to breed and uh, die end of their life cycle, then this male clownfish will automatically turn into female. Then the rest of the member in, 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 in the same family will again go through the hierarchies uh, interactions and to fight to dominate who becomes the next father in the family and with that uh, members that re, uh, recycle mem uh, replacement members then the new mem new member from new hash uh, larvae of the clownfish will try to look for this uh, em empty family to settle down so that's why when you go to this uh, uh, to the ocean to the coral reef when you dive you look at the sea anemone we look at the clownfish all of them are not equal size they have one large one second large the medium size the rest is just small a very small some can be like very small so these are these are the unique of this uh, uh clownfish the life cycle is very different so this is one of the very uh interesting model and put it into uh, uh, uh in research and also in uh, teaching 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 knowledge that for industry or for economy, this is the huge potential market and uh, 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 in the ornamental fish uh, industry. Like I would say that uh, most of these uh, 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 clownfish now uh, in the market are very much still depending on the wow. So there is a, a, a huge, huge market to have to establish and to promote to develop this this uh, uh, industry this uh, uh, species this uh, on uh, uh, particular uh, family to fulfill the the, the the demands of the market so this I think the clownfish have a very important role in 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 our our human life I would say that so there's a follow-up question to um, the earlier question just now. So this question is from Aslan Muhammad. Uh, Dr. Liu, uh, are you said they, as you said, uh, they are able to live without sea anemone in captivity. Is it better to have them or are there any alternative ways? Well, uh, if you want to keep 
a, 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 gen, a generous uh, biological natural cycle of the clownfish if you are able to keep sea anemone and if you are able to keep a colorif uh, aquarium then you putting the sea anemone together with the, the clownfish of course you will see a very different behavior but if you are not able to keep a sea anemone and then you want to keep clownfish without the sea anemone yes you still can do so but then their behavior will be very different you will you will not able to see how do they swim entertain dancing around when they play around with the tentacle of the sea anemone that is very unique which you will not be able to see if you keep the sea anemone the clownfish without the sea anemone okay so time to see if our audience would still keep clownfish as a pet if it is an endangered species mm -hmm. okay slightly more than half says no but uh, quite a lot will still keep it as a pet even if it's an endangered species okay so why is there a need to breed clownfish in captivity is clownfish an endangered species well clownfish is not an endangered species but then it's vulnerable why because clownfish in the ocean in the natural population they live depends on sea anemone and sea anemone live depends on coral reef if we do not have the healthy coral reef area the sea anemone will go on and sooner or later there's no clownfish this is we cannot deny with our climate change issue and it's keep going to be happening to be the situation going to be even more serious to the ocean life since I would say since uh, uh, one decade ago and since we, we started the industrialized uh, decade so the change the world is keep changing and we are predicting that in 2015 the ocean ocean temperatures will rise almost 1.5 to 2 temperatures which will automatically lead to up to this uh, uh, acidifications reduce ph in the oceans which is very sensitive uh, uh, to this uh, uh, sea life in the coral reef. Once the coral reef area gone, the whole the entire uh, species, entire life in the ocean will gone. Because we know that the coral reef area is one of the feeding ground for the, all the juvenile. And also, it's also pre, uh, as a clinic hospital to the, to the sea life who go days to search for spa, search for treatments. Same thing like for sea anemone that have the important role in, in, this, uh, 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 in this cycle. So can you explain to us uh, what does it mean by a true or a false clownfish? How does one differentiate between the two? So uh, your master's was on false clownfish. Is there a difference when you want to breed them? Or what was the difference between the two? Oh, well, uh, why I choose false clownfish? False, because false clownfish is the origin species that are uh, not uh, species that we found in our coast, uh, our, our oceans, our coral reef area. It's native to our, our water. Right. What's the difference between the false clownfish and the true clownfish? But normally we don't call it true, or we call it peculiar clown. clown. As the differences between these two is where the false clownfish, you will see they have three bands in the body, right? With the yellow, with the orange or color. But for the uh, peculiar clownfish, they have the black band behind the white band. So that's made the difference between these two species. Other than the this color, they all both of them are the same. So this is just this video will show you that one of the family living in this uh, sea anemone. The previous videos you see there's no clownfish and in, in living in this uh, sea anemone. So you will see the tentacles color, the movement is different. So that's how important they live together. That uh, 
uh, have this uh, uh, social life together, symbiosis, living together, mutually distinct. Okay. Right. So, we, uh, so we do Asians like to eat fish, right? Uh, so, is clownfish a delicacy in some cultures? Can humans consume clownfish as a protein source? Uh, as far as I know, there's no any um, uh, ethnic or any any group who consume this clownfish, right? and clownfish also not mainly for consumption, right? So why, I would say that uh, in the ocean there are still fish available, which we're not going to 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 eat this small uh, clownfish. Which is have the have a limited of, of the flesh to be consumed, right? and clownfish is only living in where you can find this uh, uh, sea anemone in the nature. Right? So spend the time to look for them. I, I would say it's much more energy consumed compared to you just fish those who are available in the pelagic water. I think this is why people not going to cons not to consume them. Of course, uh, uh, most of the developed and uh, developing country keep this uh, clownfish as a as a as a as a very unique, uh, precious as a as a as a as a pet. I would say. Okay, so. Uh we have a question from also again Sh Sharifah Norit's Lim. Uh, Dr. Liu, from Naked Eyes, can we determine which is male and female and what is their average lifespan? Well, when it's very easy to identify if they are live in the in the in the oceans, whichever the large and the, the individual, those are the parents. And the, most of most of the time, the largest one is always the female, and the medium size is always the, the male. But in captivity, but if you are in the aquarium shop, if you want to uh, set up an aquarium, then you go and buy this uh, uh, clownfish from the aquarium shop. Then their social life have already been disturbed, right? So you you are not able to identify through morphologically unless the fish are being fed well fed which you can see when they have a round round uh, uh, stomach those are uh, with the sign that more than 5 cm and above those can be the female and those with a uh, 4 cm and above or to find that could be the male fish but still if you get this fish back home they may not become a partner, they might not fall in love with each other. Why? They need to go through again this social uh, social interactions to get to know each other, to communicate who to become the dominance and who to become the subdominance. They still need to go through all this process, and they will determine by their own. It's not like others, uh, most of the freshwater ornamental fish that we can determine. Uh, this is male this is female which they have the sex been fixed throughout their life clownfish they change the sex that's why it's very difficult for you uh, for us to fix uh, to identify uh, male and female right? so that means they also can still be hermaphrodites when they are in captivity yes if you, yes, if you provide them a, a very good environment they will go through again the, 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 the life cycle. And the other question is uh, the average lifespan. So in nature, they can live. I'm not sure how long that do, they, they, do, they can live. I have no idea in nature. And I have not come across with any of the uh, okay. reference application who indi uh, indicates how long the fish can survive. I have no idea. But I would say that more than 15, 20 years. But what from the what do we have? What would uh, we have in our hatchery? Those are with me after after I came back from my PhD studies. 
some of them have already with me almost uh, six years. They are still there. And before that, uh, the one that I have from my from my from my previous study, some of them, uh, uh, I would say, with with our system, they live more than ten years in the, our system. Yeah. So exactly how long do they took in the, to end the life cycle? I have no idea. I would really have no idea how to tell you this exact number, but definitely more than 15, 20 years, I would say that. And it's also depend on species. And very importantly, it depends on the living environment. Okay, so now, maybe uh, it looks like our audience, we have quite, uh, they're quite interested in, in how to breed. So are you able to share with us the process of how confish are bred in captivity? Is it a trade secret that you, not able to share this oh well uh i'm not going to say it's a trade secret we do have developed our our, our specific diet formulations and also our uh, spawning our hatchings uh, 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 facility which we have already registered it okay so if you ask me is there a secrets or any any uh tips to breed clownfish to understand clownfish uh, I would say, like, ask yourself how much interest, patience that you would like to invest. If you do not have patience, no, you will never success. Right? Keeping a clownfish, not much difference compared you keep other species, freshwater fish as well. Right? You need time, you need a dedicated uh, 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 behaviors and do all the responsibility on time. It's just like take care of baby, right? You need to provide them a good food, nutritious food, right? Which now, nowadays, it's very easy. You can go and buy the pellets from the shop with very different uh, level of proteins, right? For clownfish, protein level about 40 to 45 days is good enough for them, right? And you can also feed them with variety of uh, seafood. Just feed them well. And then check the water quality all or uh, uh, schedule it, right? Every every two weeks or every month, then you refresh how much water. And very important is in captivity, this fish you need to be social, you need to understand that. Let them get to know you as well, who you are. Let them to uh, uh, to understand, then they will really uh, enjoy live with you. They will spawn naturally. You no need to do uh, with like other fish that you need to specific injection for hormones um, or you need something uh, special uh, water water treatment for this species no keep the water quality consistent consistently and we follow our ocean temperature between 28 right? sometimes you can go up to uh, uh, 26 still possible but then they likely our 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 study found that 26 is 28 is the most suitable temperature for both blue stock, the parents, and also the larvae. Right? Keep changing water. Right? Install a good uh, facility, the filtration facility, which also easier, make your life easier later on not to change water that frequently. So do this uh, 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 frequently and Stand, spend some time with the with the with your fish. Look around them, and provide them some uh, 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 some uh, privacy. Then I would say within maybe one or two years, then your fish will spawn naturally. Naturally. What is the survival rate like in natural and artificial surroundings? Hmm. This also the same answer. I have not. We have. We have. We have no exact number in the nature. No, but I would say like maybe should, perhaps it's less than ten percent in nature. Uh, the uh, uh, reference that we come across, the number of eggs that they recorded, right about 
200 to 250, some go to the 300 for this false clownfish, right? So when they hatch, and after they hatch, they swim up to the surface of the ocean, settle down to find where is the home that available to accommodate them. That journey have already uh, made a huge loss. When they're able to settle down in the sea and, in the, the, and grow up together with other families to be to, to uh, until adult, that I would say less than ten percent. I have I'm not sure that about that, but I would say less than ten percent. All right, but in captivity in our our study, the highest uh, survival a higher hatching rate that we recorded is about ninety five percent and survival is about 98 percent but in general with our techniques our diet and our facilities we get uh, about 80 percent up to they come a uh, juvenile and grow up to uh, 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 into a uh, uh, going to adult size uh, and also uh, our 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 x number with our diet, we are re we gen in general we recorded about six hundred fifty to seven hundred x num numbers. The highest uh, batch that we recorded is about one thousand two hundred something. This was the highest one. So just now you did mention about you know uh, how we can uh, breed clownfish in captivity. Um, you are saying keep it uh, clean, uh, ensure you know sometimes also give them privacy and things like that. How is it different for other fishes? So is it, you know, clownfish? You, you did mention that, for example, you don't need to use uh, hormonal treatment, okay? Then you inject over cream and things like that. Uh, but is it considered easier or more difficult for generally, you know, other fishes to be bred in captivity? Yeah, well, it's considered easier which you not have to do anything. You just do the routines, uh, uh, maintenance, uh, responsibility, give them a good food on it, changing the water. So then you don't have to really spend uh, extra money to look for the hormone to, to induce, to inject them with the hormones to induce them. Or you have to set a specific uh, water treatment for this species. So it considered an easy species to do. It's just that you need to understand their biology, understand their their what do they need, and also uh, consistency with the nutrition and also this uh, uh, water quality maintenance that will give uh, a positive result for you if you want to breed clownfish. So these are the those are the the videos just now are uh, the baby uh uh 30 days old baby and sorry it's about 27 days old baby from our 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 hatcheries right so why they, they are uh, uh grouping you know in 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 one group there is you see front here is one group behind it is another group so those are their normal behavior for the juveniles for the for, then try to set it down to group to form the family so those are the uh, uh, very unique uh, 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 behavior, the life cycle of clownfish. Okay, so we shall now have our last poll for tonight. We still have other questions. It's just the last poll. Okay. So which of the following sea animals is already extinct? So we know that uh, clownfish is not uh, endangered. It is just vulnerable, but you know, still we need to uh, not we still need to take care of it. But which of these animals already extinct? Sea hare, sea urchin, sea horse, sea cow. Okay, so you know what to do. Click on your answer right below. Okay. In the animal kingdom, brightly colored animals are usually poisonous or dangerous. Okay. So clownfish is naturally bright orange. Right. So, is this due to its diet, or you know, it is a sign that you know it is poisonous or dangerous? 
Well, for clownfish, no. It's not poisonous, right? And it's also not sting. Uh, clownfish is a uh, uh, clownfish is a very friendly uh, uh, species, which is can be that's why it's recommended as an ornamental uh, uh, candidate, right? So the bright col brightly color in the uh, bodies in the clownfowl in the clownfish is mainly from the diet. In nature, they mainly fed on plankton, which including the phytoplankton from plants, right? And also the main diet, the preferred diet in nature is this uh, small stream, small uh, uh, this uh, small fish larvae, and the the preferred is small streams and also variety of the viva, the molas larvae. Those are the, the, the content high, uh, rich in carotenoids that use, can, uh, the clownfish is used to build up, to trigger, to stimulate to the, the, the pigment cell development. That's why they have a very brightly color. Of course, in different species have different color. Some have a very black color, like uh, uh, um, this, uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, tomato. When they come into mature, then the body will change into black color. Right? When they are uh, 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 still uh, not yet uh, paired up, their body is the red color. So those are uh, depends on the uh, uh, pigment cells in the body, and then the and with the diet that they consume. They were trans uh, using the the, the carotenoids. These are astatantin content from the diets to be stored and synthesized and transferred to develop the pigment cells in the in the skin. That's how it become uh, most of the coral fish are most colorful compared to the uh, 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 freshwater fish or these are pelagic uh, migrating fish. Right? This depends mostly depends on the diets. Speaking of diet, so we have a question from Eugene Lin. Greetings, Dr. Liu. What's the size of a duly hatch fry and what feed is the most suitable for the fry? Thank you. Oh, newly hatched uh, clownfish have the size about 3 to 4 mm total length. Right? And the primary diet for this clownfish is lotifer. You need a lot of fur. Although some some species like uh, uh, maroon or this uh, uh, clucky or this uh, tomato depends on the rootstock quality. Some of them can have the uh, copy pot at the first diet, but in general, still they prefer our 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 studies. Uh, discover that using lotifer still showing the best result. All right. So let's see which animal, which sea animal our audience thinks is extinct. Okay. The choice is between sea hare forty five percent and sea cow fifty five percent. Now, which is correct? So, which is it, Dr. Liu? Did they sure. get it right or both were so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about sea hay. I think some in some, 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 uh, 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 some oceans still have it. The sea cow. Sea I think cow so. Should be dugong, right? Yeah. 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 And. So. Mm -hmm. Not sure about it's totally extinct or not, but then unless they are uh, uh, in in the natural population, I think so, because uh, they see the dugong, the sea cow leaf depends on seagrass. So probably not extinct, but then probably uh, very uh, what is that term? Uh, close to extinction, really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do believe there are some are still available in the uh, conservation center, but in the okay. wild, in but nature, I'm natural. Yeah, natural, okay. I'm not sure. So probably uh, not in the natural setting. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, we do have one question from um, us like talking about uh, getting sea salt water. Okay, Dr. Liu, what can we do to get uh, salt water from the, for the country? Oh, so you, can, uh, you can just go to your, your kitchen. <laughs> no, no, you can't use the, the chemical salt. You have to use this uh, aquarium salt, which you can buy from this uh, aquarium shop. Right? That's the easy one. Or get the seawater. And you mix the seawater half and with the artificial salt half. Right? And sometimes here, here, sometimes and when we uh, lack of this uh, artificial salt, this aquarium salt, we also use the 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 karam kasa, the 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 very uh, the very natural one, the very dirty one. So then you need to uh, purify them. You need to filter them. Get rid of all these uh, dust, and then get the salt water that you can use. But make sure you check the salinity between. Uh, clownfish can survive at twenty five to thirty five. No with no uh, any uh, effect but with, in our lab, we try that. But then the best sanity is still between uh, 30 to 32. Make sure you, you have the uh, 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 desirable sanity for them. We have another question for Nuru Sakina. Doctor, what is your view regarding the recent event where tourists took the pictures of clownfish in the bottles which the boatman captured? Thank you, and advice. I think this yeah. one uh, uh, was in the news, right? Yes. This was in the news, and also I've been uh, I'm referred to give an advice, to give an, 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 an uh, 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 recommendation. So this is a totally wrong and totally irresponsible and ethical when you took out the, you should not do so not even the tourists or boatmen no you should not you should not do so why clownfish they don't really have a very good navigation skill and clownfish have no experience be, uh, beyond their, their their living boundary beyond their sea anemone if you took the clownfish from the uh, 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 from the from the home from the sea anemone up to a surface, and you just play around with them, take a photo, and then you just pull them in the sea. They will have a difficulty to find the way home. This is why the the, the movie have the Finding Nemo, the way home. They can they have a difficulty to find them. They have very bad skill in navigating their their directions back to home that's why the clownfish they don't spend uh, their time to play around uh, uh, around the whole coral reef no just within uh, 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 the, the sea anemone area so this uh, uh, this behavior is made me very sad about that so what will happen to that particular clownfish if you took it out the water then they put up in the water in 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 in, in the ocean after you took the photo right so you think that you are doing something uh, uh, uh not harmful to them but no all this activity is harmful to clownfish all the journey home the clownfish may not be able to find the right sea anemone the right home that where she or he living living at they might not be able to find if they find, even though the way on the way home down to the oceans, so colorful, this clownfish is an easy target for other predator. It's an easy target, right? So that increase the, increase the risk, the predator is risk. Right? Second, uh, of second possibility: if the, the clownfish, that particular individual, are successfully settled down. In the coral reef area, right? they need to find the right sea anemone, the right home. Right? If they found up, if they find this sea anemone, which have already been occupied, residence by the 
other uh, member, right? So he or she might be not welcome, and the member from that uh, 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 from that CNA money who try to chasing this a uh, new new newcomer away. This the clownfish, although it's a very friendly, when they come to fighting the territory, there's no job. They really fight until the other ones gone. So there's that there's a life cycle. So I would really advise and really recommend uh all of us when we go to islands, any island, not only in Malaysia, any islands, when do snorkeling, whatever, not only clownfish, just put yourself away, enjoy the scene, not to touch, not to remove, not to try to keep anything from the from from our coral area. Just leave it there. That's my advice. I, I do remember many, many years back uh, when I was just snorkeling off uh, Langkawi, I think it's Pulau uh, Paya. So people would even just uh, take the uh, fishes up, parrot fish and things like that. So even when uh, you advise them not to, they, they will get very defensive, they will, they will get very also uh, angry. So yeah. I think this is very important, but uh, as she has explained very, very detailed, very clearly, why it is very important uh, not to do so. Okay, we, we, we wouldn't want to be also grabbed out from our home, uh, put in a car, brought somewhere, and then, you know, we need to find our way home. Uh, now we have GPS, things like that, so uh, the clownfish doesn't have that. Yeah, never, 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 never do that try to try to advise and try to try to convince your friends or anyone so not to do so okay so it looks like we have to wrap things up uh, just now you mentioned you know you gave some advice i think the most important one is patience right patience so what else would you advise uh, hobbies who wish to set up a marine aquarium at home or even you know at the office uh, and keep clownfish as a pet. What other advice would you have for them? Well, first, same thing as I, 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 I teach in my class, ask yourself, are you willing to spend your time? And who is going to take care of them, responsible for them? If you or you are depends on others, so if you think that you are the ones and you really have a patience in that, yes, you can do so. I would also advise you to keep one aquarium uh, at home or either in the office, something live that you can use uh, as your uh, uh, psychology therapy. When you look at the living organism, uh, this living color, beautiful color, swimming around, like just a dancing in front of you, is something that make your mind re relax and your uh, something that uh, make your mood better. So I would advise you to do so. So what do you need and what were I going to advise you to uh, uh, advise if you want to keep? Check the budget. How much do you really willing to spend on? And for fresh water, there is, you can have a very limited uh, 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 amount that you can spend a very good aquarium depends on size and quality of aquarium that you take right for freshwater ones yes the easy one for 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 me my advice is you go for a uh, for a gravel filter the most cost effective and also effective filter for freshwater for marine ones i would advise them you spend a bit a little bit more money to have a basic equipment that needed, such as an external filter, and at least uh, one pump in for your filter, one for your aquarium to keep different uh, uh, angle of wave length, uh, wave cycle in your system to get it healthy, healthy. And also, you must have one protein schema. That is the one that you cannot uh, leave out. 
which is very important help you to maintain a good water quality for them so if you are uh, willing to to invest in this uh, 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 basic equipment yes you go ahead and then the, the last one i would advise is to understand the biological of the fish the behavior if they can be mixed together or not try to understand their feeding uh, behavior are they a predator are they uh, herbivorous or carnivorous or omnivorous? Uh, are they an aggressive one or are they a friendly one? Can be mixed up with others? And how much uh, uh, space privacy do they need in one aquarium? Not all fish are willing to share the space with others. Not all, more, right? So need to understand all these uh, uh, basic uh, requirements then you are good to go and keep the patients and dedicate to them then you are good to go that's my advice thank you so much dr liu for spending your time with us in the past hour we thank you for your sharing and hope you and everyone at ecotrop stay safe and healthy always thank you thank you and thank you everyone that's all we have for tonight Thank you for being with us since 8 p.m. We would like to announce that Taipung Penang is now open daily from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. and currently have a promotional entrance fee of just RM10. Don't miss this golden opportunity to explore the wonders of science at Taipung Penang. See you again next month for another episode of Science Stream. Good night and stay safe.